Imagine if there was a free utility that you could use in any version of Ableton Live, any edition of Ableton Live, that would unlock endless possibilities for you. Hey, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, founder of From Studio to Stage. Today, I want to show you how to do just that by using the IEC driver. We're going to talk about what it is, how to set it up, and how to use it. So let's get started. So before we get started, I want to let you know this is the first video in a series of videos on using the IEC driver with Ableton Live. Uh, we're going to talk about how to do all sorts of really cool things using the IEC driver, but today's video is all about what it is, how to set it up, and why you should use it. So first, let's talk about what the heck the IEC driver is. So the IEC driver is the Inner Applications Communications driver. And what that means is it allows you to route MIDI between programs on the same computer. Think of it as uh, having a virtual MIDI cable that you connect from Ableton Live into main stage that will allow you to send MIDI between the programs. It's kind of similar to Rewire from Propeller Heads that's uh, available in Reason and some other programs. But the IEC driver is a virtual MIDI driver that allows you to route MIDI between programs. What's cool with this, though, is instead of just being able to uh, send MIDI from Ableton Live to main stage, say, to, to send program changes, I've linked to a video below where I show you how to do that in Ableton Live and main stage. But instead of just being able to do that, imagine being able to create MIDI clips in Ableton Live, route those to the IEC driver, back into Ableton Live to do all sorts of crazy things. Have Ableton stop at a specific place in the timeline. Uh, have Ableton add locators for you automatically. Uh, have Ableton just continue to loop. Uh, what if you had multiple loop brackets in Ableton Live's range of view? You can do all that and more with the IEC driver. Again, uh, we're going to be talking more about that here in the next few videos. But today, let's talk about how to set up the IEC driver. Here's all we have to do. Super simple. I, I will mention and stress, though, every time you get a new machine or maybe you go to use your drummer's machine for the first time, make sure that you uh, set up the IEC driver and do this routing that I'm going to show you here every single time. After you do it once, though, you're done and never have to do it again. So let's go to Spotlight, which is uh, Command Spacebar, and we want to search for Audio MIDI Setup. So we're going to hit Enter to load Audio MIDI Setup. Now for you, you may not see the screen automatically, so you likely will see something that looks like this. Uh, in case you do see that, go up to Window and just choose Show MIDI Studio. It's going to show the MIDI Studio uh, and show you access to all the different things we have here. So for instance, you see Network MIDI. Uh, that's useful when we're sending MIDI between two different uh, computers, right? For sending MIDI from Ableton Live to ProPresenter, for instance, we're going to use Network MIDI. So so to enable the IEC driver, easiest thing in the world, we're going to double click on IEC driver, just click on device is online. Now we could rename our IEC driver, we could add multiple ports here, we can name our ports. Think of ports as uh, basically multiple MIDI cables, right? Uh, so we could have a bus that's going to go to main stage, we could have a bus that's for internal routings and Ableton Live. Um, for now though, we're just going to leave one bus, we're going to leave the name exactly the way it is. If you do change anything, just make sure you hit apply uh, when you're done. Now we can go ahead and close down this window uh, and head over to Ableton Live uh, to make the rest of our settings. One note I want to mention, if you are on a PC, uh, the IC driver is not available to you, but there are some other solutions that uh, are virtual MIDI drivers that work exactly the same way. I've linked to those below in the comments, uh, in the description rather, so make sure you check those out. Once you get those programs installed and set up, everything else past that point is going to be exactly the same that I'm showing right now. Uh, so whether you're in Live 9 or 10, Intro Standard or Suite, PC or Mac, everything from this point forward is going to be exactly the same. So let's dig in and show you the couple settings in Ableton Live we need to make to make this happen. So I'm going to go into Live's Preference pane, Command, Comma, and I want to go to the Link MIDI tab. Now when you head into the Link MIDI tab, you're going to see that you have both an input and output for the IEC driver. Uh, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and head to, uh, till we find our output. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've enabled track. So you just click on that and enable track and you're going to see that it says on. What that means is we're going to be able to send MIDI from Ableton Live's tracks to the IEC driver. That's really important for us because we want to be able to send MIDI from a MIDI clip 
to a track to the IEC driver. Okay, with track enabled on the output, let's scroll back up till we see input IEC driver. Again, if you renamed your IEC driver, renamed your buses, you'll see it show up as whatever you renamed it there. Uh, but if it's just the default, it'll be IEC driver bus one. And we wanna use the IEC driver to remotely control Ableton Live. So over here to the right, we're gonna make sure that remote is enabled. Now we don't wanna enable track sync, we're just going to enable remote. Uh, sometimes you can you know, work yourself into a situation uh, by enabling too many of these and actually create a MIDI feedback loop to where you're sending MIDI out of the IEC driver back into live and creating a feedback loop. To be safe, just enable uh, track on the output and remote on the input for now. With this uh, done, we can close down live's preferences and we just need to use one MIDI track for this. So I'm gonna delete the rest of my tracks and I'm gonna just use this MIDI track here. I'm gonna rename it IC so that I know what I'm using it for. On the MIDI two side, uh, I wanna change it from no output to IAC driver bus one. That means whatever MIDI clips live within this track, uh, they're gonna be routed to the IAC driver. Um, when I hear from people and they say, hey, the so-and-so thing with the IAC driver isn't working, nine times out of 10, it's because they have not routed it properly in the track uh, on the track itself in Ableton Live. So make sure and confirm that you have done that properly. So with that set up, now I need to create a clip and uh, add a mini note to that so I can do some cool stuff with it. I'm gonna do this over in arrangement view. So I'm gonna hit tab. Um, if you are using Live 10, you can double click to create a MIDI clip. Uh, if you're using Live 9, what you're gonna wanna do is create a MIDI clip. I like creating a MIDI clip that is a measure long. So I'll uh, select an entire measure and I'm gonna do Command Shift M. Again, if you're on Live 9, select an amount of space. I suggest a measure. To command shift M. Um, if you're on 10, just double click and it will happen automatically for you. So now I'm gonna go into this clip and I just need to create a MIDI note, any MIDI note, it does not matter. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom here just for now and uh, create a C minus two. So I'm gonna double click to create that. If you happen to see a pencil, then you're in draw mode. You can just hit B to go back to just the normal uh, mouse mode. Uh, and I'm gonna double click to create my MIDI note put the mouse to the right of the MIDI note so I get a bracket and then just drag. Now I like to have the MIDI note to, to fill the entire bracket uh, or loop brace. Uh, and this is just so that when I look up uh, at the arrangement here, I see that the note fills the entire clip. I've seen some people that, that keep the note at the very beginning. When I look up, it sometimes just looks like there's a blank clip there. So I like having it the full length of that clip. Now, one other thing I want to mention, uh, it's important to know what channel you're sending MIDI on. So we could choose between channels one uh, to 16. If you have nothing else connected to your machine, just leave it connected to channel one. But if you have multiple MIDI controllers connected to your machine, you're going to want to start to be very specific about this is going to be maybe internal routings on channel one and this other device is on channel two or whatever it is. But for now, we're going to stay on channel one. Now, with a note created uh, and our track created, how do we map our MIDI note, right? Uh, we wanna use this clip to control something. Uh, for the sake of this video, I wanna control Live's metronome to turn it on and off. Now again, there's endless possibilities. Again, make sure to stay tuned for the next few videos in this series as I show you some specific examples and implementations of this. But for the sake of this, I just wanna show you how to map to something in Live. So what I'm gonna do is uh, hit Command M to open MIDI assign mode, or you could go up to the top uh, right hand side of the screen to click on MIDI to open MIDI map mode. Anything that is purple can be mapped to that MIDI note. So we can use that MIDI note that we created in our clip to control anything that is purple on our screen. So the way to assign a clip to something in live is we just need to jump back a few measures. Now, if your song is really slow, you could probably just jump back a measure. Uh, if your song is super fast, maybe jump back a, a few measures. Um, and then what we need to do is as we jump back and click play, just go and click on whatever you want to assign the note to. So for instance, I'm gonna go back about four measures. I wanna assign it to metronome, so I'm gonna click the metronome and watch what happens as soon as the clip hits with the note, it gets assigned to the metronome. Then I'm gonna do Command M to get out of that and press spacebar. Now what's gonna happen is I jump back in my arrangement. As soon as that clip hits, you're gonna see the metronome turn on, right? And if I go back again, I'll jump back a measure. As soon as the clip hits again, it turns the metronome off. 
So that's how to set up the IEC driver. It's a quick look at settings and audio MIDI uh, and live preferences and then getting our routing correct. Also how to assign a clip to anything in Ableton Live to control it. But again, the next few weeks, we're gonna talk about some specific implementations. So make sure you see those videos. Hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Hit follow if you're watching on Instagram, Instagram Live, and make sure to like our page if you are watching this on Facebook so that you see when we post a brand new tutorial now if you want to go even further than these tutorials or you can't wait uh, for these tutorials to see what else you can do with the IEC driver I'd encourage you to head to from studio to stage.com we have a course there called using the IEC driver with Ableton live or we dig deep into this so again I'll show you set up in that course but then we talk about how to do all sorts of things with the IEC driver how to have Ableton add your locators for you automatically how to create a pause and go to next queue and arrangement view uh, stop clip repeat clips, dynamic guide cues, all sorts of things using the IEC driver. The best part of all of that is you can go to the site from studiostage.com, sign up for a free seven day trial where you get access to everything uh, that the site has to offer. Our private Facebook group, which is my favorite part of the course. Uh, all the courses, we post a new course every single week. Uh, you get a, a monthly call that's just for subscribers um, that you get access to as well as discounts on webinars. So uh, everyone else has to pay $20 for a webinar, you get it for free as well as all the templates and everything that's available in the course so if you're interested in learning how to use Ableton live to perform on stage you want to go beyond a YouTube video like this uh, and go deeper and be a part of a community that's that's trying to do the same thing head to from studio to stage.com where you can start that seven day free trial uh, again make sure to subscribe like follow so that you see the next few tutorials as well and if I don't see you next week take care have a good one Thank you.